1212. This is not necessarily for publication. This one here is rated R. Restricted. The reason it's rated R because what we about to bring out is an offense to the entire world. But that's not new because to bring out the gospel and the truth about Christ is to offend the entire world. The church system as we know it today is a farce and a lie. Islam as we know it today is a farce and a lie. These things have nothing to do with Christ, nothing to do with the King of the Jews, nothing to do with Israel, nothing to do with God, nothing to do with the Savior. The church is filled with a bunch of Sadducees and Pharisees, money-grubbing gangster thieves that need to be removed from their seat as Christ prescribed in the Bible. And that's why it's important for us to know that these churches, all these churches and religions are teaching lies, man. The entire so-called Christian churches are teaching lies. Islam is a lie. All these religions are lies, and they stop us from knowing who we really are, and that stops us from following the Bible, man. The church is teaching us that the religion, our laws are done away with. They teaching us that the laws are done away with. That's why all our women can go sit up in the church on Sunday, go on Monday, on Wednesday, different days, have Bible study, come out and be the biggest freaks they are, man. Shalom Israel, this is Officer Kapash once again from that town, Indianapolis, Indiana. Alright, we got classes for the ISBK uh, Tuesday through Friday, 7 to 9. Alright, you can go ahead and get through our website, www.ishbk.com. It's a link on the website to go straight to the classes or get the number. If you got questions or you need counsel, you know what I'm saying, if you're in a bad situation, you need help, you need advice, quick, you know what I'm saying? Anything like that. Got trouble with your women, kids, and stuff. Anything. Call counsel, man. 1773 812 7281. That's 773 812 7281 for counsel. We're going to talk about how we both, blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians, are in the same hell and were in the same hell and going through the same hell through the same enemy. Same oppressor now and then. You know what I'm saying? Regardless of what the white man said about how we were slaves to them, we're going to go into the truth of the situation. Deuteronomy chapter 28, we're going to go to verse 16. Cursed shalt thou be in the city, and cursed shalt thou be in the field. We is cursed in the city and in the field. Native Americans, too, man, for not keeping the laws. We was cursing the fields, man, when we were slaves. When I was a slave, man, memoirs from the slave narrative collection, cotton fields. We was, we was cursed in there, man. And we thought it would be better when we moved to the cities. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, and uh, uh, you know what I'm saying? We all moved to cities north, you know what I'm saying? After slavery was ended, a lot of people started moving north. We thought it would be better. But now look at us, man. We cursing the city as well. We was cursing the field. We cursing the city. Native Americans, man. They was in the field, man. They was cursed when a damn white man came and gave them disease and measles and smallpox and was killing them. Put them off on reservations and still was cursed on the reservations, man. Put them in dust bowls and deserts, man. Hoping that they wouldn't even survive out there and hopefully like no man's land. But them Native Ark gave that brothers, man, that we, was, we strong as a Native. We strong people. They didn't die out there, man. They still survived, man, and made it through. Even though the white man put them in those... Uh, Horrible situation, living situations. We curse in the city, curse in the field. We go to chapter Deuteronomy, book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 21. The Lord shall make the pestilence cleave unto thee until he have consumed thee from off the land, whither thou goest to possess it. 
The Lord shall smite thee with a consumption, and with a fever, and with an inflammation, and with an extreme burning, and with the sword, and with blasting, and with mildew. And they shall pursue thee until thou perish. Man, when the white man first came over here, them Aztec nations, the Inca nation, you know what I'm saying? Them uh, Cherokee, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Wampanoag, Narragansett, the Massachusetts Indians, man, all them, man, they was thriving. There was lots of them, man. But a lot of them, man, was killed off with disease. Smallpox. You know what I'm saying? Measles. Chickenpox. All those things, man, was terrible, man. And the Lord said that was going to happen. He was going to smite us with it. And then after that, the sword. So, so the white man would be living, move to Americas, be living side by side by Native American Indians without a problem. Then once the Native Americans got sick and diseased from either having sex with a white man and getting disease and carrying it, or getting uh, blankets from the white man with the, the white man gave them knowingly it had disease, why they'd be living next to them for years. You live man, imagine that. Them Gadites living side by side with white men who just now come into America for a year. Once the Native Americans then they start getting sick, bam, here come the white man with guns, blades, and riding on them on horses, trying to kill them and their children, man. That's how the white man rolled, man. He waited, man, when they were sick, that's when the sword came. Just like the Bible says, man, in the same order. Then the sickness came, then the sword. Man, this Bible man is talking about all the situation what happened with us. Blacks, Native Americans, and Hispanics. All our situations, man, is in this Bible. All our life, your life is in this Bible. The fact that your father wasn't in your life is in this Bible. The fact that a young man, Bloods and Crips, is killing each other is in this Bible. The fact that you in jail and prison is in this Bible. You know what I'm saying? All of that, we're about to get into it today. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 25. The Lord shall cause thee to be smitten before thy enemies. Thou shalt go out one way against them, and flee seven ways before them, and shall be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. Man, in battle with this white man, our Gadar brothers, even us, when we battled and had slave revolts, like Levant Tesor of uh, Haiti, I mean, uh, yeah, of Haiti, during his revolution, Nat Turner, all of them, man, we go in one way, man, we flee seven ways. You know what I'm saying? The battle over the uh, the west western frontier, the Apache Indians, Comanche, Cheyenne, Navajo, you know what I'm saying? Sioux Indians. All of them, man, will go to battle, man. One way we'll end up fleeing seven ways, man, because the Lord wasn't with us. We had victories. You know what I'm saying? No doubt we had victories, man, in battle. But we ultimately lose, lost, man, because the Lord was against us. And we weren't keeping his laws and statutes, man. These get out brothers, man, they, it was fierce horse riders, man. I got a book called The uh, Black Indians, man, talking about how, you know what I'm saying, the Seminole Indians, uh, when once they got defeated in Florida, even though they held it down for over 50 years, man, against the U.S. The United States Army, you know what I'm saying, when they got removed and they was living in, in, uh, in Mexico, uh, working on the border, man, as warriors, and security, man, on the border of Mexico from Texas. Man, they talked about they had over, uh, over 20 serious battles, man, over a hundred, over a hundred wounded of the enemy, over, tw uh, I think it was 20 kills, over 20 kills of the enemy, and they only had one loss, man. You in all these battles, man, killing the enemy, and you only got one loss, man. They can't mess with us, you know what I'm saying, to be honest. But when we're when we not with the Lord, the Lord gonna cause us to flee out seven ways, man. This say here, the Lord shall cause thee to be smitten. It's the Lord reason why we on we on drugs and we can't afford rent and we can't do this and we and we out in the in ghettos, man. The Lord did that because we don't want to keep His laws and statutes and commandments. The reason why our God our brothers on reservation, our Hispanic brothers is in barrios, because the Lord put us there because we sinned against Him and we continually sinning and sinning and not coming to the truth, which is in this school. All right. Uh, we're going to go to Deuteronomy. Uh, let's get to the end of 25. It says, And thou sh shalt be removed unto all the kingdoms of the earth. We were removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. When Christopher Columbus, Columbus first came here, man, a couple, first couple of voyages, he stole Native Americans and brought them back to Europe. You know what I'm saying? To the old world. 
and they were slaves and, and entertainers and, and you know what I'm saying, and, you know what I'm saying, things to look at, you know what I'm saying, over there in Europe, man. They were brought back. Them the slaves, man. That's the slave trade, man. The Bible tells us, man, we're gonna be brought to Egypt again with ships. We in Egypt now, man. This is Egypt. We have slavery here, man. This is Sodom as well. The Bible says that. It's homosexuality here, and it's our home of our slavery, man. This is where our bondage is occurring, man. In this place here in America. And all over the globe. We're gonna go to uh, chapter 28, verse 30. Thou shalt betroth a wife, and another man shall lie with her. Thou shalt build a house, and thou shalt not dwell therein. Thou shalt plant a vineyard, and shalt not gather the grapes thereof. See, we understand how that's for the, for the Judites, for blacks. Yeah, we were slaves. Everything we did went to the white man. We freaking invented something, it went to the white man. We built his, the plantations. We built the stables. All that, man. You think a white man was out there doing that? Putting construction together? Nah, he had all you blacks out there doing that painting. All that hard work, labor, that's what we was doing. But I'm going to break it down how the Gadites is in the same situation because the Lord put us all, man. He don't treat us differently, man. We ain't keeping the laws. This is what's going to happen. He ain't doing it, but he said it was going to happen. Our Gadite brothers, for an example, uh, whenever they would get removed out of their land to a reservation, all their belongings will go to the white man. Let's talk about the Trail of Tears, man. It's in his DVD here. Uh, Native American Tales of His Proud People. The Trail of Tears story. The Cherokee and other, in the, what's called the Five Civilized Nations, you know, of Indians, Five Civilized Tribes. You got the Cherokee, Chickasaw, the Choctaw, the Seminole, and the Creek Indians. Man, that was considered the Five Civilized Tribes, man because they were attempting to integrate with the white man. They were wearing his clothes, re learning in his schools, in his churches, trying to be a Christian, dressing all, you know what I'm saying, like an old you know, colonial white man, you know what I'm saying, buying uh, blacks to work for slaves. What happened was, the white man seen that around on the East Coast and in Georgia. He seen all the Cherokees, all them with, with, with wealth and things like that. Horses and stables and farmland, you know what I'm saying? He's seen that, and he got Andrew Jackson to sign a bill to get him the hell out of there. Put him on a trail of tears, man. Women and children had to walk uh, across the damn country, man. Through the rain, sleet, and snow, man. Dying, walking to death, you know what I'm saying? It, when, when a baby, something slowed down, the white man would just kill him. Bash him against the, a tree, man, so they could keep it moving. That's how he did our Gadai brothers in. And guess who was right up next to him? Dying with him. All the Judites and blacks that was, that was working with him, man. The white men called them slaves, but the Native American Indians, they say that they call them slaves and say they're slaves, but they don't treat, they don't do them like the white man, like they property. It'd be black man with, with guns, free, can do, live whenever he wants to, man. They only said like that because that's the only uh, thing the white man knew. If the Native American would say, oh, this is just a, a black man living amongst our tribe, guess what that white man going to say? He an escaped slave, and they're going to snatch him and his family up and take him. So the only way they have to stop, the way they can stop that, is to say, oh, he's my slave. So the white man wouldn't be able to just take him and their family. That's the only way we can even live in peace, man, in this place. Man, but the Lord don't want you to be at peace, man. The only way we really could be at peace, man, is to be against our brothers, man. But the Lord wants you to love your brothers, man. So that's what we're going to do. But uh, that's the situation there. All the, the houses, all that on the Trail of Tears was still there, man. People had to leave. Our, our Gadai brothers had to leave their houses. Food still in the oven. Clothes still up. You know, people taking showers and they all had to be forcibly removed. Just like that, you know what I'm saying? Just like how the white man do. Come in like a you know a squad with strike attacks and stuff. So they came in, made them leave, take anything they could just carry, put them in a place until they're ready to travel right, to to the Oklahoma. How do you think Tulsa, Oklahoma, even existed, man? How do you think all them blacks got over there? Because the Cherokees and all them nations, there was blacks living with them. All them five civilized nations that had to get removed, man, to the to the west. What's going on, dog?
Your ancestors were in Indian territory, yet they were neither Chickasaw nor were they Americans. They were a people without a country and without any legal status at all. That's crazy. The Chickasaw freedmen would spend decades in this stateless limbo, invisible and forgotten. All the blacks that moved with them just, just continued to live over in those areas and thrive, man. That's where Tulsa, Oklahoma came from, from freedmen, you know what I'm saying, that lived with the Native American Indians. And or, and or that moved over there because of Native American Indians, they could live with them, you know what I'm saying, peacefully. So them Gadda brothers, man, they, all the things they built up too was taken. Every time they had to be removed out of their land, all the things that they built up, their crops, their farmland, you know what I'm saying, their animals, had to, was taken. Just like what we had to build was taken and get and the white man claims it and takes it. So we the same. Thine ox shall be slain before thine eyes, and thou shalt not eat thereof. When they, that's right there, it's talking about the buffaloes that the white man killed by the millions. Because during the battle for the Western Frontier, during the 1700s and the 1800s, more like the 1850s and 1860s, when the railroad was introduced going across the West, the white man couldn't, couldn't deal with the Native American Gadites Indians that became master horsemen and was, the, was, uh, was stopping their progress and was living out there, eating, living off the buffalo making their teepees, attaching them to their horses, and just moving and migrating to a different spot, you know what I'm saying? The white man said they did a scorched earth campaign and killed all the buffalo. They said, well, they're now since they're Native American Gadites, can't have, they can't find their own food no more, we can easily defeat them. But they couldn't defeat them, man. Only way they could even hang with them was to hire buffalo soldiers, hire black men to fight against the Indians. That's the only way they could even mess with them in battle, man. Right? That's the only way they can even mess with Israel, man, is to pin us against each other. Alright? But they killed all the buffalo so they can so they can easily defeat the Native American Gadites in the western frontier. You know, Kansas, you know what I'm saying? That's where all the Plains Wars come from. You know what I'm saying? All the old western movies, man. Because all them Gadites are Apache Indians, man, them Sioux, Comanche, all that. Arapaho, all them lived over there. Alright, we're gonna go to uh Verse 31, we already did that. Verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thine hand. You won't lose your children. It's easy to see how the blacks lost them. You, a, a, a woman was just, during slavery, was just something to have kids. So they can sell the kids and put them off to different lands, and that stayed happening in slavery. That was one of the worst parts of slavery that the ex-slaves would say was the fact that you could be removed from your family and never see them again. Lose your children that you went through labor before and raised up. Lose them, never see them again. You know what I'm saying? Go out and get your freedom, try to come back and buy your family and you can't never find them. We can see how that happened with the blacks. Let's see how it happened with our Gadai brothers. And Worst of all, the Bureau of Indian Affairs committed these acts against the children entrusted to its boarding schools, brutalizing them emotionally, psychologically, physically, and spiritually. So many of the maladies suffered today in Indian country result from the failures of this agency. Poverty, 
ignorance and disease have been the product of this agency's work. And so today I stand before you as the leader of an institution that in the past has committed acts so terrible that they infect, diminish, and destroy the lives of Indian people decades later, generations later. These things occurred despite the efforts of many good people with good hearts who sought to prevent them. These wrongs must be acknowledged if the healing is to begin. Kevin Gover, Assistant Secretary, Indian Affairs Department of the Interior. We should be proud of who we are. We should be proud of our heritage. But when you have a, a generation before you that doesn't, first of all, doesn't know their heritage, so how can they hand it down? They don't know their family, so how can you be proud of something they don't even know about? And then when things are kept secret, when, oh, this is this is real touchy. This is real touchy. It's a complicated story. It's one that, that, that people need to... Um, Americans need to be told because I think most Americans have no no idea at all about the boarding schools. They wanted to wipe out the Indian so they took me away from my grandpa and to wipe my native tongue and native ways I'd love to know what did the schools do to kids that, that you, you, we, we were warned. This is our generation. We were warned. Don't go looking. Don't look up anything. I think they thought they were doing something noble. I didn't agree with them. The indigenous peoples of this land have always presented a problem to white mainstream America. Our very identities as native people was what the problem was perceived as. We were told not to go into our family history. We were told not to go looking. My mother said, oh, I can't, I can't, that's, that's it. I can't talk about my mother. She won't, she, she said, don't go looking. She said, don't go looking. We have lost so much. I'm gonna talk to her spirits. They don't understand English. We're going we're gonna to get in this book right here, The Reservations. All right, they tell about detailed stories and pictures about what's called boarding schools, man. Them boarding schools were hell, was hell for the Native American Gadites, man. The white man pushed them off into the desert and consolidate all the resources when the Gadites have nothing and then tell them, well, you should send your kids to this boarding school since you can't take care of them. So they sent them to these boarding schools and in the boarding schools, all the Native American Indian Gadites had to lose their culture, had to lose everything about them. were beat, were raped, were murdered, you know what I'm saying, were experimented on. All that mad scientist stuff that the white man on, he always experimented with, with, with blacks and Hispanics, man. And that's horrible. You should hate that, man. Um, them boarding schools, man, they would do experiments on them, on them young Native American guys. They would beat and rape them. They always find mass graves on, on them old boarding school sites. They recently stopped even looking for their grave, grave sites, man, because they knew they was there. So they stopped looking for them. They stopped even searching for them. Said, well, we're just going to leave it alone after they found the first couple hundred dead Gadai babies, man. They lost their kids, man. We brothers, man. We all losing our kids to this white man. Gadites, man, joined this school. Rubenites, man. All y'all over, man. The different tribes, Native Americans. Ephraimites. 
you uh, Mexican Jew, Issacharites, man. Because in the in the books, man, they you call you weren't called Mexicans back then. A lot of you were called either Aztecs Indians from the south or Pueblos up north, man. Even the Pueblo Indians, man. We all brothers, man. And we all connected, man, through the Lord. We're gonna go to verse 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb and a byword among all nations, whither the Lord shall lead thee. That's what we are, man. Them blacks, Hispanics, and them Indians, man. Them chief, every time you see it, you got the motorcycle with the chief on it, you got the smokes, cigarettes with the chief on it. They just looking at you like you are uh, um, amazement, astonishment, man. Like you just a, uh, something to sell, man, a selling image. That's how they look at you, God, brothers, man. For us blacks, man, we astonishment because that's what they looking, looking at NBA and NFL for. Because they like, man, look at this amazing, where this amazing thing come from that can jump so high, and run so fast, and be so strong. They amazed and astonished by it, man. But that's all they are to you, man. We not no nation no more. We just an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword. Indian chief, you know what I'm saying? Uh, nigga, all them names that they call us. We just entertainment for them to look at. Verse 47, I mean 45. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed. Because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy power to keep his commandments and his statutes, which he commanded thee. The curses is on us, man, and follow us because we did not keep the commandments. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. We, this is a sign right here, man, from the Lord. All these different things that happen to us is for signs. For the Lord to, to see, man, back in the day we would know if some, something happened where a whole bunch of people got killed, something went wrong. We got to seek counsel from the Lord, what happened, what we do wrong. Nowadays, man, we just see people dying, shot, killed, and it's just like it's an everyday thing. It's not even something that's, that's, look, that's like, well, maybe we should see what the problem is. The problem is we're not keeping these commandments, man. And all these things that's on us, you know, losing, losing our land and our brothers and being killed and losing war is a sign from the Lord. Because he tells us why in his Bible, man, that he's going to do it to us. And we read it. We read it right here, man. We're going to go to, uh, all right, we gonna, we, that's enough, man, to show about how our brothers, we all have the same enemy. Hispanics, Native Americans, and get out, and, uh, and blacks, we got the same enemy. We always have had the same enemy, the same problem. You know what I'm saying? The white man is the enemy. You know what I'm saying? And uh, anything that teaches us not to keep the laws and commandments is the enemy. Christian pastors, Catholic. The Catholic stuff, man, is the enemy. Because it teaches us not to keep the commandments. And not to be, and, and not to be part of the truth. We can go into some black Indian history, man, about how we benefited from unity. Today, we're going to finish up, man, part two of Henry Louis Gates Jr., man, and that Roots show where they trace DNA history and they comp comp compile your history, your ancestors, all that garbage that the white man pushes. All right? This is part two, man. We're going to talk about straight up uh, when he interviewed Don Cheadle. If you know Don Cheadle, he's a, he's a pretty uh, prominent actor. All right? Well, somebody did get it right, but it wasn't your ancestors, it was the people who owned them. Take a look at this. Chickasaw Nation Freedmen Roll. This document is an official enrollment card for the Chickasaw Freedmen, the former slaves owned by the Chickasaw Nation. Owned by the Chickasaw Nation. Owned by the Chickasaw Nation. Your ancestors were enslaved by Native Americans. Here's your great-great-grandmother, Mary Kemp, huh. her 11 children, including Bill Cheadle, your great-grandfather, William. And you can see William's father, Henderson, or Hans Cheadle. Huh. You are one of the few African Americans who was not enslaved by, by white people, yeah, but enslaved by Native I don't Americans. Know that, I don't know how I feel about that. It's it's crazy because really you feel like, oh, the, the two biggest blights on the way this country started, you know, uh, it's slavery and the genocide of the Native Americans and the, the Trail of Tears and all those horrible stories of what, what has happened to the, the Native people here. And then our family was owned by 
people who had suffered. It's just, that's mind blowing. So you came and they say his ancestors were slaves to Native American Indians, our Gad Eye brothers, you know what I'm saying? Specifically the Chickasaw Nation, you know what I'm saying? The Chickasaw. He said he was a slave to them. You know what I'm saying? We're going to break down in the ICBK what, what the truth of the situation is of that, of that time period and our brothers, you know what I'm saying? What, what went down. Okay? This is black Indians, you know what I'm saying, off of encyclopedia. Intermarriage between enslaved African and Native Americans began in the early 17th century in the coastal settlements. In 1622, Native Americans overran the European colony of Jamestown. They killed the Europeans, but brought the, but brought the African slaves as captives back to their communities, gradually integrating them. You know, in coastal states, man, Carolinas, South Carolina, West Virginia, Boston, New Jersey, all them coastal states, man, that's when we, we, we would uh, run into Indians a lot, man. And we would marry with them, man, because those are our brothers. Let's talk about the history of what, what, what happened back in those days. In South Carolina, colonists were so concerned about the possible threat posed by the mixed African and Native American population that was arising due to runaways that they passed a new law in 1725. This law stipulated a fine of 200 pounds for persons bringing a slave to the frontier regions. 1751, South Carolina passed a law against holding Africans in proximity to Native Americans, which was deemed detrimental to the security of the colony. They wouldn't even want a Native American or a slave to be next to each other, man, because they knew we all going through the same hell, we would gravitate to each other and be brothers again. That's what they feared, man. Us joining together. And that's the same thing the Bible says for us to do, which is why they fear it so much, man. Look, Zephaniah uh, 2 and 1. Old Testament. Gather yourselves together, yea, gather together, O nation not desired. Man, blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians is not desired by nobody. Africans, uh, Chinese, Arabs, white men, we supposed to gather together because they all hate us. And the Lord tells us to gather together. Alright? That's what the Bible and the Lord tells us to do, man. That's what the white man didn't want. Because when we came together, man, we had success. We had brotherhood and love. And we're going to have it again in these last days. So much they made a law where you couldn't even bring no slave black man next to no Indian. Because they could have possible alliances. In 1726, the British governor of colonial New York exacted a promise from the Iroquois, Iroquois Confederacy to return all runaway slaves. See, man, runaway slaves would get that step, man, that safety, man, by running to that get out brothers, man. They would get safety from that, man, and get, and get, and get, you know what I'm saying, some help and aid, man, from our brothers and brotherhood. He required the same from the Huron tribe in 1764 and the Delaware tribe in 1765. Despite their agreements, the tribes never returned any escaped slaves. They continued to provide a safe refuge, refuge for escaped slaves. In 1763, during Pontiac's War, a Detroit resident reported that Native Americans killed whites but were saving and caressing all the Negroes they take. He worries this, lest this might produce an insurrection. Uh, Chief Joseph Branch, the Mohawk Indians in New York, welcomed runaway slaves and encouraged adoption of them into the tribe and intermarriage. The Native American adoption systems knew no color line. Carter G. Woodson's notion of an escape hatch from slavery proved correct. Native American villages welcomed fugitive slaves and some served as stations on the Underground Railroad. See, man, it's funny how in this country, man, this land, things repeat itself, man. Because back in these days, the black man, if they were trying to escape, they would be running north trying to get across the border to escape slavery. Same with our brothers today. Our Instagram brothers trying to get across that border in the Rio Grande in Mexico, man, for a better life. To get away from the hell and cart drug cartels and killings and kidnappings and murders. They trying to get away from all that, trying to get across the border. The same what we was doing, man. Trying to get across the border to escape slavery, whippings, and hell, and poverty, man.
The white man is the same enemy, man. And the same thing is happening, happening to us, happening to them, is happening to, to all of us. You know, saying so these curses. Man, but they was brothers, man. They helped us in this underground railroad, man, for us to get get to North and get some freedom, man. Get some, some relief, man, from the slavery and hell that we that we was in. You know what I'm saying? We thank our brothers for that. That's brotherhood. European and European Americans actively tried to divide to divide Native Americans and African Americans against each other. Whites sought to convince Native Americans that Africans Americans worked against their best interests. Europeans considered both races inferior and made efforts to make Native Americans and Africans enemies. So they, white man think both of you was ain't nothing. Think both of you should be slaves and underneath him, but he wants y'all two to fight each other though, on the bottom. So he can sit on top of both of you, you know what I'm saying? And, and then pick up the pieces and be in charge after y'all done fighting each other. Native Americans were rewarded if they returned escaped slaves, and African Americans were rewarded for fighting in Indian wars. That's where you get the Buffalo Soldiers from, man. They also hired Seminole Indian uh, warriors to fight against Gadai brothers in the, in the west, western frontier. You know what I'm saying? So they would try to pit us against each other, man. European colonists told the Cherokee that smallpox, the smallpox epidemic of 1739, was due to disease brought by African slaves to create tension between the groups. So they would tell the Native American guys that, them, that the blacks brought the disease, man. Lying, man. They just liars, man. They try to pit us against each other. Uh, the British also passed laws prohibiting the carrying of slaves into the frontier of the Cherokee Nation's territory to restrict interactions between the two groups. Some tribes were said to encourage marriage between the two groups to create stronger children from the unions. So man, they, they made laws so, so we wouldn't be next to each other. Even among the Cherokee. You know what I'm saying? Even they do that today, man. We put guys on reservations, putting the blacks in the ghettos. They try to put separation between us, man. They make sure we're not next to each other, man, in the same place. They still doing that today. Even among the Cherokee, interracial marriages increased as the number of slaves held by the tribe increased. The Cherokee were noted for having slaves work side by side with their owners. Resisting the Euro-American system of chattel slavery created tension between the Cherokee and European Americans. Like I said, the black man, the white man be mad at the Indians for having a black man walk around and have his own gun and have freedom to leave and go as he please and to work as he please and to have a family and live free, uh, you know what I'm saying, in the community. He would give the get out of hell for that. You know what I'm saying? So the white man would try to make the Cherokee treat the black man wrong, you know what I'm saying? So, so, so he won't treat the Cherokee that bad. And see how evil the white man is? to try to you know, pit us against each other. Uh, we'll go to Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. You know what I'm saying? Because he would try to make us at, be at odds against each other. Matthew 6, verse 24. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You know what I'm saying? Just because a white man got money, and can give you money and fame and, 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 and you know what I'm saying, all that, don't mean you, 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 you hate your brothers, man. You can't accept and love all that money and things that the white man can provide, uh, you know what I'm saying, with, with his lusts and things like that, and, and love your brothers at the same time, man. You can't love this world and love your brothers and be down for the Lord. It's either one or the other. And that's what they were trying to make, and that's what the Cherokees had to choose, man. Seven old Indian brothers had to choose, man. Either we're going to be at some type of peace with this white man, or it be against our brothers, or we're going to be ride with our brothers and say F to the white man. You know what I'm saying? We're going to ride with our brothers. And that's what they did, man. The Red Reuben, Seven old Indians, they did that, man. We was brothers together, man, all the way to the end. And even with other Indian tribe brothers, man, that ain't even recorded. Okay. In the 18th century, some Native American women turned to freed or runaway African men 
due to a major decline in the male population in Native American villages. At the same time, the early enslaved African population was dis disproportionately male. Records show that some Native American women bought African men as slaves, unknown to European sellers. The women freed them and freed and married the men into their tribe. Some African men chose Native American women as their partners because their children would be free. As the child's status followed that of the mother, the men could marry into some of the matrilineal tribes and be accepted, as their children were considered to belong to the mother's people. As European expansion increased in the southeast, African Native American marriages became more numerous. You know, as the white man moved more south, man, we started marrying more. That should be the same today, man. All you black single women out there talking about they ain't no good, hard-working black man, get you a freaking um, Pueblo Indian Issacarite brother, man. Get you a, a Mexican, man, from, from Mexico, man. And who us, you know, you got a Mexican friend, man. They got relatives in Mexico, man, that's looking, that want to come to America. And he'll be straight thing, straight up with you, man. You know what I'm saying? Be hardworking, man. Y'all can have a marriage family, man. That's what we did in the past, man. We was brothers to each other, man. We cared about each other's situation, man, that we can benefit from each other. The Native American women would buy African slave and free them and have, and, you know what I'm saying, have a family with each other, man. We could do the same today, man, to help out our Israelite brothers, man. You know what I'm saying? You can't find you a mate, you know what I'm saying? Somebody who can be down with you, man. Get, get, get that it's the right friend and neighbor that you got, man. Talk to that man. They got family in Mexico. You know what I'm saying? That's you know the same age as you, man. Beautiful looking brother or sister, man. You know what I'm saying? They y'all can marry, man. That's how we did it in the past, man, to survive and to be better and to third and to, and to flourish, man, by benefiting from each other. We're gonna go to this bottom piece. The Seminole people of Florida formed in the 18th century in what is called ethnogenesis from Muskegee, Muscogee Creek and Florida tribes. They incorporated some Africans who had escaped from slavery. Other Maroons formed separate communities near the Seminole and were allied with them in military actions. Much intermarriage took place. African Americans living near the Seminole were called Black Seminoles. Several hundred people of African descent traveled with the Seminole when they were moved to Indian Territory. Others stayed with a few hundred Seminole in Florida. Like I said, man, whenever the tribes would have to be moved, or the American Gadash tribe, the blacks would be with them, man. That's how we got to Oklahoma. That's how we got to, uh, you know what I'm saying, Texas and Kansas and other places like that. Moving with our brothers. Western frontier artist George Catlin described Negro and North American Indian mixed of equal blood, and stated they were the finest built and most powerful men I have ever yet seen. You know why those powerful built men that he ever seen back in those days? Because the blacks that he seen would be slaves, man, would be at work to death, would be starved. So obviously they're not going to look all up, uppity dory, man. The guys he seen would be in, would, were, were living in horrible conditions. But when he seen them together, he described that they were powerful built, man, and fine looking, man. Because they were eating good, man. Because they had brotherhood. Because they could support and help, and help each other, man. And that's the same it is today, man. If our blacks and Hispanics and American Indians would come together more and help each other more, we would be looking, we'd be eating good too, man. We'd be eating real good. Let me get this last part right here. By 1922, John Swanton's survey of the five civilized tribes noted that half of the Cherokee Nation were freedmen and their descendants. You ever wonder why all black people are always talking about my grandma Cherokee, I'm Cherokee, my relative Cherokee, Cherokee? Because half of the Cherokee nation are freedmen and their descendants, which means a black man. That's all that means, man. A Judah, you know, somebody who was a slave and got free. You know what I'm saying? So we was heavily mixed with our brothers. And the Cherokee nation was moved from uh, that Georgia area all the way to Oklahoma. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of them be was, was brothers and tribes together. First John, first John chapter four, verse twenty. If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love the most high whom he hath not seen? Man, you gotta love Gadites. You gotta love your brothers in the neighborhood. You gotta love them, man. And the best way, best way to love them is to join the school and learn the truth. 
learn about brotherhood and learn how to not sin against your brother. You know what I'm saying? It was compromised and stolen from them. They didn't know any, any other language. So whenever I talk, I, it came out. Cree would come out and whenever I talk, I, I get hit. I got hit so much that I, I lost my tongue. I lost my native tongue. The only thing I remember was my Indian name. It is Senukihu. Means old man eagle. That's the only Kree I knew. Kill the Indian and save the man. So we, we, we love, in this, in this truth, man, we love our God, our brothers, and they're going to be a part of this truth with us, man. Our Ephraimites, our Mexicans, you know what I'm saying, our Puerto Ricans, Cubans, Haitians, Argentinians, Colombians, Brazilians, we all going to be together again, man, 12,000 from each tribe, you know what I'm saying, and there's 12 tribes. We're going to go to Revelation 13 and 9. And another thing, man, nowadays a lot of people think the Indian Gallup Brothers is doing real good because they got casinos and, you know what I'm saying, that, that uh, gambling money and reservation, you know what I'm saying, strict laws and stuff like that. That's a small percentage of the guys that, that's, that's owning them casinos, man. It's the same with the black community. They be like, oh, blacks are doing good. They got millionaires and stuff like that. Oprah and Michael Jordan and millionaires, Tiger Woods. No. That's a small percentage of the black community that's rich and up in the sports and entertainers, man. Yeah, that's a small percentage of a percentage. The majority is in the good ghettos, man. Same with our ghetto brothers, man. The majority is in reservations and poor. Not owning no casinos, man. Because a lot of the casino owners are white men. Because of the dog's role, which was a role, uh, you know what I'm saying, of who was a uh, ghetto and who was not. You know what I'm saying? They exclude many full-blooded Indians from, from the rights, you know what I'm saying, so they can get, keep more money. The, the certain white men that be in the, in the tribe posing as an Indian. They say, you're not an Indian, so they can keep the, the, the gambling money. You know what I'm saying? It's a small percentage of guys men that's making that heavy money, just like it's a small percentage of blacks that's in the NBA. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's world-famous rappers. There's only a handful of world-famous black rappers. Shoot. All right, we're going to Revelation 13 and 9. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here's the patience and the faith of the saints. That's what we wait for, man. We was killed with the sword. We was brought into captivity. We got the same enemy that did this to us, and the same enemy going to get paid back from Christ. You know what I'm saying? And it's the same solution. Join the school. Become that. Become a part of that 144,000 that the Lord is raising up. 12,000 from each tribe. All right. Because the same enemy is going to be led into captivity and killed with the sword, just like he did us. All right. Like I said, man, my name is Officer Kapash from Indianapolis. Okay. We got classes at the ISUDK Tuesday through Friday, seven to nine p.m. All right. That's on the website ISUDK.com. If you're in the area, you know what I'm saying, or you want to become a trooper in the school, become a part of this truth, and become a part of that 144,000 that the Lord raised up, you know what I'm saying, call this number, 1773-812-7281, okay? Also, pay your tithes, 10% of all the money you earn, you know what I'm saying, goes to the Lord, goes to the school. You can pay it through the website, ishubk.org, 10%, that's the law in the Bible. No straight, no, no getting around it. And finally, there's a radio show every Monday night that the ISUBK hosts. The hypest, greatest radio show out there today. Commander General Yahana, you know what I'm saying? The most controversial man in America. You know what I'm saying? Got the hottest radio show. We're the only one that tells the truth. Tell it like it is. Because we're not, we, we not, we can't, we not, uh, you know what I'm saying? We, we can say whatever we want, man. Because we ain't, we ain't hindered. You know what I'm saying? We say the truth. We ain't hindered. We can tell the truth. And, and that's why it's the hypest and greatest radio show. Best radio show. Listen to it. Monday nights, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. You can get the information on the website or listen at, listen to it through the website. All right? I'm signing off. Shalom.
1212. This is not necessarily for publication. This one here is rated R. Restricted. The reason it's rated R because what we about to bring out is an offense to the entire world. But that's not new because to bring out the gospel and the truth about Christ is to offend the entire world. The church system as we know it today is a farce and a lie. Islam as we know it today is a farce and a lie. These things have nothing to do with Christ, nothing to do with the King of the Jews, nothing to do with Israel, nothing to do with God, nothing to do with the Savior.